Okay, today we will be finding the second derivative of sine of x squared, but we are not going to be using the chain rule, power rule, product rule, none of that. So how can we do it? Well, yes, we can just use the definition of derivative, right? And this right here is the second derivative, so we just have to run through the definition twice, right? No, we don't have to. In fact, we can just set up one limit for the second derivative, work that out, and get the answer. And that's what we'll be doing today. And it's going to take a while. And we'll be using a lot of trick identities and some famous trick limits. No calculus here, though. Well, no derivative here, though. Of course, we're doing calculus. But let's review the definition of derivative first. Here, f prime of x equals the limit as h approaching 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Good. And this right here pretty much finds the slope of the tangent line for us. Have a look. Let's say if we have a picture like this, let's say here is x, and let's say you know, here is the tangent line like this. Here is my function f of x. Good. Run through the definition, we get the slope of the tangent line, and that's the derivative. But the problem is that this regular derivative sometimes does not exist. For example, if we have an absolute value function, let's say it looks like this, and it has a corner here, the regular derivative does not exist here. So what can we do? Of course, we can just give up. <laughs> or we can also do the so-called symmetric derivative. So don't give up, right? Symmetric derivative. And I don't think that many calculus one classes goes over this nowadays, but here it is. So what is this though? Well, here is the notation f with a little subscript s right here of x. It is still going to be the limit as h approaching zero. Alright, now check this out. Where did we get this part? f of x plus h, what's this? Well, this right here is pretty much the slope formula, and this is just the second x coordinate. Because for the slope formula, we need to have two points. We only have one right here. Let's go ahead and have another one. Let's say somewhere here. And I'm just going to label this right here. Now it's another variable, but rather, I will call the difference between here and here h. So here is x, and then from here to here is h. So this is x plus h. Now this point will have the coordinate x plus h, and then put that in here, f of x plus h. And then this point will have the coordinate x comma f of x. Now if we connect the dots from here to here, the slope of this line is going to be y2 minus y1, so that's the top, over x2 minus x1. x and x cancel, so we just have the h. And then we want this point to be as close to the red point as possible, so we just have to make sure that h approaches 0. And that's the beginning of the calculus 1. Now, for this right here, for symmetric derivative, it's the following. This part, same thing, we have f of x plus h. So you can just think about here is the x, and then we move to the right, assuming h is positive. So we have x plus h here, and here we have the point. Well, next what we are going to do is, we are going to minus. Symmetric means, you know, symmetric. I know symmetric means symmetric, though. But the other one is f of x minus h. What this does is that if h was positive, we will just go to the left right here, right? Because minus h. So that would be x minus h. And then we look at this point right here. And we are going to find the slope between these two points. And that will be a horizontal line in this case. My picture is not the best, but it's meant to be symmetrical in this case. And check this out. x2 minus x1, h, x plus h, minus x, minus h. A x and x cancel, h minus negative h, we have 2h. There we go. 
So that's how we find the symmetric derivative. And in fact, if you just make h approaching 0, you can see that it's always going to be 0 in this case. So here's the deal. Let's say this right here is, hmm, let's say we have f of x equals absolute value of x minus 2. Right? Let's just say that. The regular derivative does not exist when x is 2. But the symmetric derivative will be equal to 0. Right? So you can just think about this right here as the absolute value function move to the right two units. But again, this is just the first derivative, so is that. Here's the important point I want to make. The idea is, if we have the regular derivative, then of course we will have the symmetric derivative, not the other way around. Sometimes we can have symmetric derivative, but not the regular derivative. Right? Keep that in mind. Now, here is the formula for the symmetric second derivative. Second derivative. And this is the one that we'll be using today. So, I don't know if there's a notation for that, so I'm just going to skip the notation. I'll just tell you guys what it is. The symmetric second derivative is going to be the limit as h approaching 0. Right? Here we have f of x plus h, and then plus f of x minus h. This is kind of like a combination of this and that now. And then we are going to be minusing 2 f of x. And then the bottom here divided by h squared. I will make another video to go over this formula. But I know you guys are very eager for us to use this formula to find the second derivative for that. So let's do it. And same idea. You know this function is always differentiable, sine of x squared, right? There's no corner, no vertical asymptote, no discontinuities. Always differentiable. So if we find the second derivative, if we find the symmetric second derivative, that will be the same as the regular second derivative. So that's the key. All right, enough talking on that. So I'm just going to erase all this. <laughs> it actually took me a many tries to go over all this picture. Oh, okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here equals the limit as h approaching 0. All right, so set this up. We are going to put x plus h into here. So we will have sine of x plus h like this and then squared, and then plus f of, well, sine, 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 sine function, sine of x minus h squared, and then minus 2 f of x, which is just sine of x squared, and then all over h squared, right? Of course, if you would like, you can think about why this is true. And also, you can think about how to solve this, but I will erase the board. All right, so let's really just pretend that we don't know any of the chain rule and all stuff. But how do we deal with this? Check this out. Here we have sine of something plus sine of the other. Both of them have h. So I think it's a good idea to combine the first and the second sign. But how? Well. Here's the first identity we need. And the identity is that, imagine if we have sine of something, that's called A, plus sine of something else, that's called B. What's the formula for that? I know it's here, but let me just do a quick proof for it, because this is the one that not a lot of us remember, right? But this is one, sine of alpha plus beta, alpha plus beta, if we have an angle sum inside, this right here, I think it's easier for us to remember because it's a lot more common, we use it a lot more often. So here, this right here is equal to sine of the first times cosine of the second plus sine of the second times cosine of the first. Similarly, if we have sine of alpha minus beta, 
the only thing difference is the plus will be a minus. So this right here is equal to sine alpha cosine beta minus sine beta cosine alpha. And now check this out. We have these two equations. Let's go ahead and add them up. This and that cancel. We have two of this. So this right here is sine of alpha plus beta plus sine of alpha minus beta equals two times sine of alpha times cosine of beta. Hmm, what good does this do? Well, imagine if we set alpha plus beta to be A, alpha minus beta to be B, and if we can solve alpha and beta, then we can just plug in here. That's how we can come with the formula. So let's do it real quick. Alpha plus beta equals big A, and then alpha minus beta equals big B. All right, let's do this in your head. Add them up, so we have two alpha, and then divided by two. We know alpha equals A plus B divided by two. And then beta, subtract then first equation minus the other one. So the alpha will be gone, but we have two beta, and then divided by two. So A minus B, yeah? So beta equals A minus B divided by two. Now, put them here. Ladies and gentlemen, sine A plus sine B is equal to two. Sine of alpha, which is that A plus B over two times cosine of A minus B over two. All right, now let's go ahead and use this formula to just kind of set this up for us real quick. So, um, how does that look? Let's, let's just put it here, right here. This is going to be the limit as h approaching zero. All right, this and that together, we will have two, and then sine. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is the big A, and that's the big B. So we have this, let's put this down, x plus h squared, and then plus x minus h squared and then over 2 times cosine of x plus h squared minus x plus minus h squared over 2 and then minus 2 sine of x squared all that stuff, and then everybody over h squared, like that. Okay, not bad, and now of course we can just do some algebra, but let me just erase the board real quick. How are you guys doing? Are you guys taking Calc 1? Were any of you guys watching this also a calculus teacher? If you are also a calculus teacher, you know what to put on the final exam. But let me see if my, yes, my, 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 my phone is still recording. All right, now, work this out, work that out. So I'll just do this real quick for you guys real quick. Here, this is going to be limit as h approaching zero. So we have two and then sine. Okay, open this, we get x squared plus two x h plus h squared. And then we add, open that, we get x squared minus two x h plus h squared and all divided by two. Now, you see, this and that cancel 2x squared plus 2h squared divided by 2, so the 2's will cancel. So the inside here will just be x squared plus h squared, which is pretty nice in my opinion. And then for this right here, we will have cosine of, it's just a minus in between, so we will have a minus like this now. So instead of this being canceled, it, what's actually going to be canceled? This and that cancel, this and that cancel, this and that becomes 4, right? 2xh minus minus or becomes plus. So we have 4xh and then over 2. So this right here will give us 2xh. And then minus 2 sine x squared. And then all divided by h squared. And then I know you guys are feeling excited because, wow, this expression is getting shorter. 
originally it was like that long and right now it's this don't be too happy too quickly not too fast why because here we have an ankle sum sign of x squared plus h squared let's use the angle sum identity for sine to expand it and then you see here we have sine of x squared so hopefully we can somehow factor out the sine of x squared and all that good stuff so right here let's open that so this becomes sine of the first times cosine of the second plus sine of the second times cosine of the first all right now I'm going to write this down right here. This is the limit as h approaching zero. Okay, this is going to be super long. Check this out. This and that, we will have to, to what am I talking about? This and that, we will have to distribute. So let's put them down first. We have two cosine of two xh, yeah? Times that, which is sine of x squared cosine of h squared and then do the same thing with that so we have to add 2 cosine of 2xh times sine of h squared cosine of x squared and then lastly minus 2 sine of x squared and then all divided by h squared now here we have 2 also the sine of x squared uh, that's the same as that so we can put them you know right next to each other and then factor out the two sine x squared we are in the h world for this limit so we can actually put that in front of the limit so here we will have two sine of x squared then the rest is limit as h approaching zero for the first part, we will just have this times that, which is cosine of 2xh times cosine of h squared. And then minus 1. So minus 1 here. Okay. And then over h squared. That's just looking at it as a limit. Next, we have this part over the h squared, right? Now for this part, Notice we have the 2, I'll put this in blue, 2, and also cosine of x squared. They don't have h, so we can put that in front of the limit. So plus 2 cosine of x squared. And then focus on the limit as h approaching 0. And then here we have that, which is cosine of 2xh sine of h squared over h squared. Cool. So this right here has similar flavor as when we were doing the definition of the derivative for sine x, right? Again, we have to, we end up with trying to figure this out and trying to figure this out. If we can do that, done. If we cannot, uh, I will go cry. All right, now I'm just going to tell you guys the famous limits. Uh, with trick functions, I'm not going to prove them, but uh, we'll just use them. So I'm going to kind of squeeze in here, right? So I will tell you, note. The first famous one is, if we have the limit as theta approaching zero of sine theta over theta, this right here is just equal to one. Do not use Lapidus, because this is meant to be when you are trying to prove the, deriv the derivative of, uh, of the sine function. Next, the limit as theta approaching zero of one minus cosine theta. And sometimes you can reverse this, doesn't matter. Why? Because the answer is zero. So if you, you know, change the order, you still get zero. Don't say negative zero, it's still zero. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you guys this too. I'm not going to show the geometric proof. So how can we continue this? This right here, it's easier to figure out why. Check this out. We already have sine of h squared. Yeah, this is also h squared, and h is approaching 0. So in fact, you can pair this up. That will approach 1. And then when h is 0, you can put it here. It's just cosine of 0, which is just 1. 
Well, that's very nice because this limit is just one. So we have that part, right? Now we have to figure out this. And how though? Let me tell you, it would be so much better if we don't have that part, if it's just cosine of h squared minus 1 over h. It would be so much easier because th this part, this part, it's just pretty much that. You can just, of course, change the water. But we do have that to, to take care of. So what can we do? Check this out. Let's focus on this limit. So here is the limit as h approaching 0. I'm going to write this down again. Cosine of 2xh, cosine of h squared. One way to somehow get rid of this is to factor it. huh? So I'm going to subtract. Why subtract first? because uh, of this identity or limit. I'm going to subtract this guy, which is cosine of 2xh. But don't forget when you do this, you have to add it back right away. So we add cosine of 2xh and then minus 1. So if you look at the numerator, it's still the same as the original. Or over h squared, but I'm just going to pair this up Actually, no, I'm just going to put it as O over h squared for now. Because next, what I will do is, um, yeah, I'm going to factor stuff up. Actually, no, I'm going to, okay, 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 I will do this. I will, I will do this. h squared. Well, we, you guys all saw what's happening already, so this is what I'm going to do, all right? I'm going to put this as over h squared for the first part, right? And then for the red part, I'm just going to say that's a limit of the other part because the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. I'm sorry, I just don't have enough space. Somebody, if you would like, you can buy me a bigger board. But before that, I need to, may need a bigger place. So anyway, though, okay, I'm going to add the limit as h approaching 0, I need a positive cosine of 2xh, yeah, and then minus that 1 over h squared. So we have two more limits to talk about, like this and that. Okay, so let's do this right here first, and let's do that right here. So for this right here, I'm going to factor out the cosine of 2xh, and that's exactly what I told you earlier, right? So here we have the limit. This is the limit as h approaching 0. Factor out the cosine of 2xh. Unfortunately, we cannot put it on the outside because it does have the h. So stay here. And then here we have cosine of h squared minus 1. Now, have a look. I'm going to focus on divided by h squared here. Why? The limit of a product is a product of the limit. This right here is nice. I know I wrote down 1 minus cosine theta, but the limit for that is 0. h squared, h squared match. If you would like, you can do a change of variable. Say theta is equal to h squared because h is approaching 0, so h squared will still approach 0, so this is good. So this right here, approach 0. And this right here is nice. When h is approaching 0, this guy is just approaching 1. So it's just one time zero. It's of course zero, right? So have a look. We've broken this down into this and that, but the first part is just nicely equal to zero. So we really just had to focus on this, all right? We just really have to focus on that. So I will unfortunately have to erase this. So this reduces to the limit of h approaching 0, and then earlier it was the cosine of 2xh minus 1 over h squared. If we can figure this out, we are done. But how? This and that is uh, almost the same. Well, not really, but we have to make it work. Here's the fact though. Once you have done the geometric proof for this limit, you can actually go from here to here, right? You can use this to prove that. But to do so, you multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. So check this out. I have this, yeah? What I will do first is, 
I like to have a one going first. So this right here, I'm going to write it as negative on the outside and then limit as h approaching zero. And we have one minus cosine of two xh over h squared. Why did I do that? It's easier when we multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. Multiply one plus cosine of two xh. One plus cosine of 2xh, right? So this is going to give us negative, and then we have the limit as h approaching 0. This times that is just going to be 1 minus cosine squared. But 1 minus cosine squared is what? Sine squared, right? So I'm just going to write that down as sine squared of, we have the input 2xh and then over that, which is h squared times 1 plus cosine of 2xh. It looks pretty good, huh? So how to, do we continue? Well, check this out. Sine squared means sine times sine. So I'm going to break it down. So this is the negative limit h approaching 0. OK, ladies and gentlemen, on the top we have sine of 2xh times one more sine of 2xh. On the bottom, we have h squared. Now what? It's just h times h. Sure thing. And of course, lastly, we have 1 plus cosine of 2xh. OK? Have a look. This part. Oh, no. I only have the h match. We need a 2x in order for us to use that. Remember, the input and that have to be the same. We need a 2x. Don't worry. If we need a 2x, just multiply 2x here. Huh? Just multiply 2x here. So of course, we need a 2x in the front. But don't worry yet, because we have another part. This right here is also the same situation. Sine of 2xh over h, we need another 2x here. So we multiply the 2x and 2x on the bottom. That means we better have a 4x squared. And the 4x squared is nice because it has no h, so we can put that in front of the limit. So this right here is going to be approaching 1 now. Likewise that. But how about the last part? This is 1. The blue part is also 1. When I was doing this on my own on the scratch paper, I got so scared because I somehow ended up with 8. 2 times 4 somehow end up with like a negative 8, but it's wrong. It's supposed to be negative 4. Why? Because I forgot this guy. Don't forget about this guy. This guy is important. Okay, 1 plus this right here is cosine of 0 because h is approaching 0. So it's 1 plus 1. So this part, we have a 2 on the bottom. So it's 1 over 2, right? This part is 1 over 2 on the bottom. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll come back here and I'll erase this right here for you guys real quick. From here, we have the 2 cosine, sorry, 2 sine of x squared times this part. Well, we have negative, so let me write out negative 4x squared. Yeah, negative 4x squared times 1, times another 1, doesn't matter, but lastly, this 2 is on the bottom, so we multiply by 1 half here. Aha! That limit is that. Okay, and then right here, let me just at least finish this legitimately, and I think I will just write down like a full detailed note and then put it on my Patreon later on for all the steps, because I'm sorry, I just don't have a big enough board. All right, and then we'll just finish this. Here we have plus two cosine of x squared, and all this right here is just one, so let's multiply by one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't mess this up. Two and two cancel, and then we have this, which is negative four x squared sine of x squared, and then plus two cosine of x squared. We are done! But how can we be done? If, you, if this is not correct, how can we say we are done, right? So you know what's going to 
happen. All right. This is the second derivative. Of course, we know how to take the derivative. So let's just go ahead and take the derivative. All right. So here we go. D dx of d dx. Right. It's pretty much like this. Well, that's why we have d2 on the top like this. dx2 like that. Right. Because you are taking the derivative of the derivative. So d dx d dx of sine of x squared. <sighs> inside out inside here we still have the ddx on our side but take the derivative right here right the derivative of sine is cosine and the input stays and then multiply by the derivative inside the derivative that is 2x right now take the derivative of this again we need the product rule yeah so i'm going to keep the first function which is 2x uh, to that and then multiply by the derivative of the second derivative of that is negative sine input stays and then multiply by the derivative of that because of the chain rule and then we add the second function which is cosine of x squared times the derivative of the first derivative of 2x is 2 aha 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 Altogether, you will see that this right here is equal to negative 4x squared sine of x squared, and then right here, plus 2 cosine of x squared. <laughs> yes! Did it right. Yeah, did it right. Although this is not the first time I did it because I tried it many, many times, but it's always, always a great feeling after you finish this, especially make a video for you guys. I know if I do this in front of my class, they wouldn't appreciate it, but I know you guys do. I really appreciate that. Thanks.